Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be building a Kumai Katana. Ku means copper, Mai means layered. The outer cladding of this sword is going to be twisted Damascus. So here we're using 1095 and 15 and 20 steels and stacking them up. Our starting billet looks something like this. The black is the 1095 and the white is the 15 and 20 steel. After a little dip in kerosene to help with the forge weld, in the forge it goes. We're going to heat this up and give it a little squish to set the weld. After a few heats, the forge weld is complete. Now we're going to take the graphic in the corner and turn it more into this. The machine I'm using here is a 30 ton hydraulic press. It makes quick work of steel. If you were doing this with a hammer, this would take a really long time. Now that we've got this forge into a square bar, it's time to change the pattern a little bit. We're going to put it in the squaring dies and re-square it on the diagonal. It's impossible for you to see here, but I'm actually holding this on a slight angle. This way, we're going to re-square it again and get a little curve in it. Now I'm just drawing this out into a long square bar. Here it is, all done, cut in half, because we're going to need one half for each side of the sword. The next step is to twist each of those bars. But before we do that, we're going to round them out a little bit. And this is to make sure that we don't have any sharp edges uh, as we twist it. It just makes it easier that way. And now we're doing the actual twist. Here I've got a pipe wrench and I've just heated up the steel, locked it in the press and just twisted it. After this, we're going to forge each twisted bar flat and we're going to get a pattern something like this. Now I've got some kiss blocks set up on my press. This allows me to get a constant thickness all the way down the billet as I'm pressing. Now I'm taking each bar to the rolling mill and getting a perfectly even thickness all the way down the bar. Now we're just straightening any curves the rolling mill might have introduced and we're ready to take this to the next step. Here we are with the finished twisted bars. They came out at about 3 16 thick and about 20 inches long. Now we're going to combine these with some copper and some 1084 steel. I've ground one side of each twisted bar clean. Here I've stacked up the copper and put the 1084. 
We're ready to weld this up and get it in the forge. It's important to weld up all the seams. Just in case we get it too hot, we don't want to melt the copper out of it. Now it's back in the forge and back in the press to squish this down. This billet was so long, I had to heat it up in sections and press each one separately. Now I'm using these aggressive rounding dies to put valleys every inch or so. That'll give a nice wavy pattern in our copper. Now it's just a bunch of repeated stretching and flattening, stretching and flattening, until we get the length and thickness we need. This billet was so long I had to pull my press away from the wall so it wouldn't hit the back wall with the billet. Now I'm just fixing the curve in the billet just to make sure it matches the curve I want on the blade. All right, folks, there we are, finally done the forging. This one took a really long time because I could only heat up about this much of the blade at a time. So looking at the thickness, it's like 320 thousandths around there, which is fine. Uh, if you'll see the... The, I just ground this side, you see the core. The core's uh, all about an eighth inch thick, which is great, that's what I want, because you definitely want the core to have a good thickness here, because that's the strength of the blade. And for everyone that says, you didn't forge it to shape, you don't forge these to shape. You cannot forge um, these layered constructions, particularly the ones with copper, to shape. You'll just ruin it. You have to do stock removal on these after you've forged out the steel. Uh, there's just no way around it, because if you try to start to forge it and hit it on the edge, uh, it will just delaminate and you'll destroy it. So we're going to cut it out of this billet and start to grind it. I'm starting to do the rough profile on my 2x72 grinder. Uh, this takes a little while and I'm not used to a blade being quite this long. Now I'm grinding all that forge scale off the sides to get down to clean steel. So I managed to get it down to um, about mm, 200 and 40 thousandths, uh, almost a quarter inch here, and it tapers ever so slightly down to about 210 thousandths um, down here. And all the while keeping the copper, uh, the core centered, so the copper's even. So next is, uh, what you may not know about the Japanese swords is the profile actually looks something like this. Um, obviously not to scale, but something like that, where there's a bevel, goes up, and then there's a little angle here. So uh, I'm going to do the top, and I'm going to uh, just take this, just like I do a false edge. I'll mark the top, and uh, I'm going to grind this. Here I'm using a scribe and some layout fluid to give me a line that I can grind to. And now it's time to grind in the bevel. This is the really tough part, folks, because you want to get this as even as you can. Okay. 
I got one side done. Now you got to do the other side and make a match. It's time to clean up the tang area and file in the transition between the tang and the rakaso. On Japanese blades, that's where the collar is going to be, or the habaki. Well, all right. Here it is after the initial grind. Um, you can see the copper done that little bevel at the top. So, uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. It is now time to heat treat. So we're going to heat treat it in the forge after some normalization cycles um, and then do some final grinding. The first step is to put the blade in the forge and heat it up to around 1600 degrees Fahrenheit. Then let it cool. That relaxes the steel and normalizes it. After a couple of normalization cycles, we're ready to put this in and heat it up to about 1500 degrees and quench it in oil. That's what's going to give us our hardened blade. Because the tang was sticking out and it's still hot, it was hard to get this flame out. Here we are, fresh out of the quench. Um, I've cooled it between uh, aluminum plates. It is perfectly straight, like perfectly straight. So that's awesome. Now, uh, 65 HRC file, let's see how we did. Not even touching it at 65 HRC. That's just taken off the, uh, the scale. That's really good. Okay, so now we got to temper this. And that is going to be a little different because this won't fit in my oven. Big thanks to my buddy and fellow ABS journeyman smith, Rick Hall, for giving me this idea on the oil temper. Now that the blade's all tempered and I've brought down the hardness to give it a little more toughness, we're going to check with the HRC tester to see actually what we ended up with. Here we ended up with about 58 HRC, which is a little high, but we're going to go with it. It's time to do the final grinding on this blade. We're going to bring the bevel up a little higher, and we're going to make that edge much finer. It's time to hand sand the blade. Yes, folks, this takes hours. But with the miracle of video editing, you're only gonna have to watch it for a few seconds. Thanks, Dad. I hate hand sanding. Trust me, Molly, we all do. So the blade's been sanded to 800, uh, so we're all ready to do the collar, otherwise known as the habaki. Uh, we're gonna be doing this with 16th inch um, copper. So I'm going to be heating this up to anneal it and then bending it because this is square right here. So bending that square and then we're going to solder it together. Unlike steel, heating up copper and quenching it in water actually makes it softer. Now I'm putting a piece of silver solder coated in flux on the inside. Then we're going to heat up the hibaki and that will melt the silver solder and fill that gap. Now 
Now we're just going to grind the hibaki to make it look pretty and move on to the next piece. The next piece is the guard. I'm cutting out a piece of mild steel just from a piece of square tube that I had lying around. Next I'll drill and file out the hole where the tang's going to fit and also put in some holes and decoration. There's our guard so far. Now I want to put a channel all the way around the edge because we're going to inlay some copper. I've got the Dremel chucked up here in my vise so I can just spin this around um, with a cutting disc to put that channel in. Let's give it a try. I wanted to use the Dremel here because it spins at about 15,000 RPMs, where my mill or drill press is much lower. Time to hammer in some copper wire that's just a little thicker than that channel. I decided I need some more embellishment on the guard, so I broke out the hand engraver and put in some wave patterns. Well folks, this just came. This is a huge block of basswood. This is what I'll be using to make the handle and the scabbard. So I just split these in half. I actually milled these out using the mill um, just to make sure that uh, the tang would fit. And it does. Uh, sorry I didn't film it. Now we're just going to glue these together uh, to make one thing and then we'll form our handle. After cutting out the rough shape on the bandsaw, here I am at the 2x72 just giving it some shape and contour. Now that the handle's shaped, it's time to move on to the butt cap. I've ground a little concave area in this piece of wood, and now I'm using that as a mold for this piece of steel. It's time to weld these pieces together and then we'll take them to the grinder and finish them all off like there was never a seam. Okay, finally done with the fittings for the handle. There's the one with the opening and then the, uh, the butt cap. And yes, there's Japanese names for these, which I forget. Next step, we're going to be putting some stingray skin. And the way we want to do this is we want this pattern on one side. It's going to wrap around and you want the seam here. Sorry, you want the seam on the top. Sorry, that's what I meant. Um, because just the way the wrap happens, it will hide the seam. So we need to make sure that that's how it turns out. So let's cut it. Thank you. 
And now onto the Manuki. These are the little ornaments that are underneath the wrap on the handle. And of course, they're going to be little copper sharks. All right, I've got this all wrapped, but um, I'm actually going to redo it. A uh, couple of reasons. First, the diamond is off-centered a little bit. Um, I'm fine with where it is on here because I want the Manuki to be opposite it. So that's fine, but I don't like that it's offset this way. The other thing is this gap here I thought would be fine because I thought the Edo wrap was going to cover it. But when I was just playing with the Edo wrap, the first side is, is right up against it, which is fine. But then when it crosses, you see a gap here. And I was, I was going to fill that with epoxy, but it just won't look good. So uh, I'm going to end up uh, re-wrapping it. The other thing is, I don't like how the wrap is raised up above this. I kind of want it to be even. So what I'm going to do is, instead of wrapping the whole thing, I'm going to kind of grind down on the handle, the sides, and just embed the um, the wrap on either side here so it'll be down and that should make it flush with the sides. So I've got a new piece of this. Um, I can probably save this one. So let's rewrap it. All the steel fittings are done, but they're all silver. We want them black, so we're going to use some hot salts to get them nice and black. After about 15 minutes in the hot salts, they come out nice and dark. Now that the fittings are done, we can move on to the long, arduous process of wrapping the handle. It's time to move back to the blade and put my maker's mark on the tang. I'm also engraving Tyrell Knifeworks in Japanese on the other side of the tang. All right, I've washed it in acetone. It's time to put it in the acid. First, we're gonna just get some distilled water and get it wet. And now, and it goes. After a few dips in the acid, the blade goes into hot coffee. That's going to make it nice and black. Now we're going to move on to doing the scabbard. Here I've cut two halves of the scabbard and I'm using the mill to just mill out the inside where the sword's going to go. Now I'm just cleaning up the edges with a chisel. I'll move on to putting some felt on the inside to protect the blade, glue it up, and then we're going to shape it on the grinder, sand it, and paint it. This is the final step. Are you guys ready to see the finished product?
oh, you better clean that up, honey.